Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the protein kinase C pathway. Okay, right, so we're in the process of discussing the structure of phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate. Okay, and we've discussed that the proper name for inositol is cyclohexane 123456-hexol which is a six carbon ring where all of the bonds between consecutive carbons are single bonds, okay? And then you're going to have an alcohol group coming off every single one of the carbons, basically. However, it's not as simple as it might seem, and let me explain why. Every carbon in this ring is going to have both an alcohol group coming off it and a hydrogen group coming off it. Okay, now if you imagine that this six-membered carbon ring is sitting perfectly within the plane of the paper, then one of the alcohol groups will be coming, sorry, one of the groups that's coming off each carbon will be coming out of the page towards us, whilst the other group will be going into the page away from us. So, for instance, if the alcohol group comes out of the page towards us, then the hydrogen will be going into the way, page away from us. Alternatively, the alcohol group could go into the page away from us, and the hydrogen could come out of the page towards us. Okay, so basically, there are going to be a huge number of different optical isomers of inositol. And let me try and explain to you the origin of these optical isomers. If you think about it, you could have all of the alcohol groups that come off all of these six carbons coming out of the page towards us. Okay, and then all of the hydrogens will be going into the page away from us. That would mean that all of the alcohol groups were on one side of the ring, and all of the hydrogens were on the other side of the ring. Alternatively, you could have three on one side, so three alcohol groups going into the page away from us, and three alcohol groups coming out of the page towards us. Okay, and you would not be able to turn one into the other without breaking bonds. Okay, so there are many different optical isomers of inositol is the message here. In fact, there are actually nine optical isomers. Now, only one of them is found within cells to any great extent, basically. And the optical isomer of inositol that is found within cells is called myo-inositol. Okay, so if you ever see anyone referring to myo-inositol, which if you're reading a biochemistry paper uh, by someone very, very rigorous, they might refer to my myo-inositol. Okay, that's what it means. Now, let me show you the actual optical isomerism that then is myo-inositol. So basically, myo-inositol is going to contain four alcohol groups on one side and two on the other. Okay. So let's say this alcohol group here is going to come out of the page towards us, whilst uh, the hydrogen is going to go into the page away from us. Then off this carbon here, you're going to have the same thing. The alcohol group is going to come out of the page towards us, and the hydrogen will be going into the page away from us. Off the third carbon here, the alcohol group will be coming out of the page towards us again, and the hydrogen will be going into the page away from us. Then, off this next carbon here, the alcohol group suddenly switches sides. It's going to go into the page away from us, which I'll show with this sort of dashed uh, line, like so, where the lines get longer towards the edge. Okay, and just in case you didn't know, these bonds where it gets thicker towards the end, that means coming out of the page towards us, whereas these sort of dashed lines going away like this, this means going into the page away from us. So this alcohol group is going to be going the opposite way to all of these three. Okay, then off this next carbon here, we're going to go back to coming out of the page towards us, with the hydrogen going, therefore, into the page away from us. And then on this last one, it's then going into the page away from us, and the hydrogen comes out of the page towards us. Okay, this is the structure of myoinositol then. Now, the carbons in the myoinositol ring are given a specific labelling. So this one here is called number one. This one here is called number two. This one number three. This one number four. This one number five. And this one number six. You are going to bind the alcohol group coming off carbon number one 
to the phosphate group of the phosphatidic acid via a phosphoester link. Okay, so let me show this. You've now got this inositol ring attached to the phosphate group of the phosphatidic acid via this alcohol group that comes off carbon number one. So this is carbon number one of our myoinositol ring. Okay, right, so I'll just show this now as a blue hexagon here. So the structure that we have now shown here, where we have phosphatidic acid bound via a phosphester link to our myoinositol here, this is called phosphatidyl inositol. Okay, so once again, the phosphatidyl prefix means all of this. It means that all of the phosphatidic acid structure here, whereas the inositol means the inositol ring here. Now, we want phosphatidic, sorry, we want phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. Okay, so we need to now attach phosphate groups onto the fourth and the fifth carbon of our myoinositol ring. Now, we know where those are going to be. One of them is here. Okay, so this is the fourth carbon, and its alcohol group will be going into the page away from us. And then the fifth carbon over here, we're also going to attach a phosphate group onto that. And those two phosphate groups will be attached to the alcohol groups that come off those carbons via phosphoester links. Okay, so the importance of understanding this information about the optical isomerism is that if you didn't understand that, you might think this molecule should be called phosphatidyl inositol 3,4-bisphosphate because you might call this the third carbon and this the fourth carbon. Well, you can't, basically. It's the fourth and the fifth carbon. This one is different from if it was on here, basically, because if it was on here, it would be next to an alcohol group over here that was coming out of the page towards us, whereas it being on the fifth carbon's alcohol group means that it's now next to a carbon which has an alcohol group going into the page away from us. Okay, so there is a very subtle difference there, and that's the subtlety in why this is called phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate rather than phosphatidylinositol 3,4-bisphosphate. Okay, right, so this is the molecule that is the target then for phospholipase C enzymes. Now, this is a normal component of the phospholipid bilayer. It's nowhere near as common as lecithin. Lecithin is hugely present within the cell membrane. It's the main one within the cell membrane. It's much, much rarer than lecithin, but it is a normal component of the phospholipid bilayer. And it's certainly a phospholipid because it contains long-chain carboxylic acids here, and then we've got three phosphate groups, so it's easily a phospholipid. Okay, right. Uh, so, what is phospholipase C going to do then when it gets activated by the alpha subunit of our heterotrimeric G protein? Well, let's draw this. Okay. So, um, here is our alpha subunit, let's say, of our heterotrimeric G protein. Okay, so I'm now drawing the picture back to front from what it was before, but it's good to mix things up a little bit. Okay, so here it is in the on state at the moment with guanosine triphosphate bound to it, and this is an alpha Q slash 11 subunit. Okay, so remember its alpha subunit is within that family of the G alpha Q slash 11. So it's either alpha Q, alpha 11, alpha 14, or alpha 15 slash 16. Okay, so I'll highlight the alpha subunit in red here. And this is going to go and bind to and activate our friend phospholipase C beta. Okay, so here is the phospholipase C beta enzyme, which is not an integral membrane protein, but which is attached to the membrane. So this is a phospholipase C of the beta family. And now what's going to happen is phospholipase C beta is going to become active and it's going to work on these phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate molecules which are within the phospholipid bilayer. So let me show one of these here. Okay, so here is the inositol ring and here are the phosphate groups coming off the fourth and the fifth carbons of the inositol ring. Okay, so let's colour the different bits in now. So here we have the long chain carboxylic acids, which are coming off the glycerol molecule in green here. And then we will colour in the phosphate groups in vivid purple here. 
and then we'll have the inositol ring in blue here. Okay, right, so that's our PIP2 molecule here, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate. And what's going to happen is the phospholipase C-beta, once activated, is going to cleave this link between the glycerol molecule and the phosphate group here. So it's going to cleave that phosphoester link between the alcohol group that comes off the third carbon of the glycerol molecule and the phosphate group um, that is now going to end up being attached to the inositol ring here. Okay, so it's going to hydrolyze that link and the two products then are going to be a diacylglycerol molecule. Okay, so this is the glycerol molecule linked to those two long chain carboxylic acids as shown here. So here are the long chain carboxylic acids in orange. Here is the glycerol molecule in green. Okay, and this molecule is known as a diacylglycerol molecule. Okay, or it's also called a diglyceride molecule to show the parallels with triglyceride molecules. Okay, so this is diglyceride or diacylglycerol. Now, I'd just like to explain the origin of this diacyl. What does the acyl mean? Because we can understand where the glycerol comes from. Glycerol is the backbone of this structure. Di, why isn't it diacid glycerol? Okay, well, basically, if we remind ourselves of the esterification reaction that occurred between our long chain carboxylic acid and the alcohol group of our glycerol molecule. Let's say this is our long chain carboxylic acid here, and this is our alcohol group of the glycerol molecule. What happened is that the alcohol group of the long chain carboxylic acid came off. It bounds to the hydrogen of the alcohol group, okay, and then the carbon of the long chain carboxylic acid bounds to the oxygen of the alcohol of the glycerol molecule. Okay, and this was our ester link. So what you'll notice is that we don't actually add on the full carboxylic acid molecule. Instead, we add on this group that I am now colouring in green. Okay, so we add on everything that's in the carboxylic acid but for the alcohol group of the carboxylic acid group. And this group that I'm circling in green here, this is what's known as the acyl group. Okay, so we add the acyl group onto a glycerol molecule, and it's a general term, it applies for any carboxylic acid basically. Okay, so what we have actually done is we've added on two acyl groups onto glycerol, and hence the name diacyl, two acyl groups onto glycerol. Okay, so that's the origin of that name. Then uh, the diacylglycerol molecule will still be anchored in the inner layer of the phospholipid bilayer, so it's going to stay there. Meanwhile, the other product, which is this inositol molecule, now with these free phosphate groups bound to it. Okay, so here is our inositol ring here. Okay, it's got these free phosphate groups attached to it. Uh, it's not going to stay at the phospholipid bilayer. It now has been cleaved off the thing that was holding it at the phospholipid bilayer, and it's going to float around in the cytoplasm. Okay, right, so let's discuss this other product now. So this other product consists of an inositol ring that has a phosphate group coming off the first carbon, the fourth carbon, and the fifth carbon. Okay, and remember this is the fifth carbon, not the third carbon. Okay, so this is inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate. Okay, so that makes sense because we've got inositol with three phosphate groups coming off the first, the fourth, and the fifth carbon. So this is inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate. Now, if you're being really, really rigorous, some people would call this myo-inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate to tell you that this was myo-inositol. That was the specific optical isomerism of it. Okay, but uh, often people will admit that. But if you ever do see that, that's what it's referring to. It's referring to the optical isomerism of the inositol molecule. Now, for short, inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate is often denoted as IP3. Okay, the I is for inositol, 
The P is then for phosphate, and because we've got three phosphate groups coming off, we put the three there, so this is IP3. Okay, so what's going to happen is the phospholipase C enzyme of the beta type is going to cleave the phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate molecule into these two breakdown products, diacylglycerol and inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate. Okay, we will come back to diacylglycerol. For now, we're going to focus on the inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate. Okay, because this is going to go into the cytoplasm and it's going to work on receptors that are within the ER membrane. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.